with the Bucks down their passing weapons, the Falcons' run defense is going to have to step up in Week 8. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code in all lowercase locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. So if you do not know me, I'm your very humble host, Aaron Freeman, a.k.a. Mr. Drew, a.k.a. the Jolly Green Giant, a.k.a. Mr. a.k.a. And I've been covering the Atlanta Falcons for almost two decades, formerly at falcfans.com, RIP. Still going strong on this podcast, and I thank each and every one of you that is an everydayer that goes strong with me. That means you go strong by making this podcast your first listen each and every day. And to become an everyday, all you have to do is subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. So today's episode, I am, of course, joined by Jarvis Davis as we do our re- weekly wrap up ahead of the Falcons game. Jarvis, of course, covers all of Atlanta sports for Locked On Sports Atlanta. He and myself, along with Tanitra Batista, are also out there for the Locked On Falcons, Locked On Sports Atlanta postcast, recapping Sunday's action. And of course, uh, I don't know if Jarvis is going to be there this week uh, because, you know, stuff. I don't know. We we won't get into it like we did the last time Jarvis was absent, but uh, me and T will be holding it down on Sunday uh, for this Falcons-Bucks matchup. But that is, of course, going to be an important game for this Falcons, as always, divisional games, playoff implications. Can the Falcons continue their 3 nothing uh, win streak in the NFC South to 4-0, and or do they get down to 3-1? This is kind of a must-win game for the Bucs, having lost that first matchup to kick off Kirktober. But, you know, is this going to be really about the quarterbacks? Because Jarvis, with the Bucs being down Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, it feels like this is going to be a game where the Bucs are going to try to shift their identities away from passing the football to running the football. And the thing that stood out to me is, hey, the Bucs ran for 125 yards against the Baltimore Ravens last week, showing that they somewhat were successfully able to shift that identity. And that's notable because the Baltimore Ravens are the best run defense in the NFL, and the Bucs managed to run for over 100 yards, and they're facing the Falcons' run defense that is not the best run defense in the NFL is very far from the best run defense in the NFL. So I sit there and I say, if they could have that success on the ground last week, you know, what are they going to do to the Atlanta Falcons and and can the Falcons run defense step up really for the first time this year on Sunday? I I think that you're, you're totally spot on when you talk about Liam Cohen as the offense coordinator, you got to, you know, lean on your strengths when you have injured injuries, of this of this ilk, right? You're talking about your your leading, you know, two your top two wide receivers and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin no longer being there, right? Godwin Godwin is done for the year, and, and it looks like Evans probably won't be back to after week eleven. I believe they talked about him um, returning, so you have to make necessary adjustments. It'll, he'll be a fool to sit up here and say, "Oh yeah, we're gonna slain the ball all around the yard and and try to push the ball down the field." That'd be crazy um, to me, especially when and I think that this was something that just really popped out in my in my soul, you know, after going back and watching the film of last week's game against the Seattle Seahawks is like the Falcons were really soft on the edge, and specifically uh, on the backside of plays. And we know how important it is to seal off that backside when you're talking about zone run schemes. Because a lot of times they leave those guys unblocked, and or if they do block them, they those is the the object of that that particular tackle or that t- backside tight end is to get those guys going the way they're going and a lot of times they're flowing towards the ball and if you were able to get somebody to seal it off like you want to that running back can cut off that bad boy cut back to if there's nothing on the front side he can cut back and you have a potential for a one-on-one with a safety then breaking into the end zone and we saw that right K- kenneth walker you know did that exact same thing so once you put things like that on tape 
Liam Cohen would be a fool not to try to sit up there and run the ball and, and really establish themselves and, 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 and be able to find their tight ends, you know, as far as when they do want to uh, go for that big play. And then they had a, a, a group of wide receivers that, you know, Baker Mayfield is obviously familiar with, you know, Sterling, Sterling Shepard. You know, obviously, you mentioned earlier on the Atlanta football party um, that, you know, he played he played with Oklahoma. He played with they played together at Oklahoma. So I feel this is a game that Jimmy Lake has to really hunker down and focus in on stopping the run, whether it be bringing an eighth man in the box and, and if Justin Simmons is able to go, which I feel like he should be able to go on, on Sunday. He has to be that guy to come down and and really show why the Falcons signed him, made a late signing, because I feel like he hasn't been a guy that kind of live up to that, that building so far. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, especially the last couple of weeks, Simmons' play has been a little disappointing, um, and we'll see if he can step up. But, yeah, you know, the Bucs ran for 160, I, I believe, against the Falcons the last time they played. Yep. Uh, again, a, a big part of that was like that, I think, 56-yard run that Rashad White had in that game where he was able to kind of get one-on-one with those safeties and, and potentially break a, a big long one. So we'll see if the Falcons can sort of tighten up against the run, but it's going to be a challenge for them. And I'm curious, Jarvis, we, we spend a lot of time in, you know, basically all of today's episode is just for me to try to, you know, trick you into praising Troy Anderson on this podcast. But, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, the, the issues with the run defense and, and yeah. whether it's the linebackers and whether it's the defensive line play. And so for you, I'm curious, you know, who, what, what position group do you feel like uh, it especially needs to step up? You already mentioned sort of the edge rushers, but along that interior D line and that linebacker group, which group do you think needs to have a better day in order for the Falcons to slow down this box run run team? It starts and ends with their interior defensive line, Grady Jarrett, Dave Onyemata, obviously with those guys, the veterans. And I feel like that is kind of where this thing starts and ends because like Grady has been himself this year and I, I think he's been nothing but but solid you know um throughout this entire season you know coming off the injury but i feel like david on your was a guy that start the season a little sluggish not necessarily getting all blocks like he like i'm used to him being disruptive in a run game and then you know once it seems like once i said something you know he he kind of popped up not to say that i have all the magical powers for the falcons in defensive line play and all i gotta do is say something and it'll get better but it seemed like it did get a little bit better you saw him getting all blocked you saw him putting shocking and shedding and, and, and making tackles so um i think that needs to continue in this game because i feel like man, this is going to be a game that liam corn is really going to say you guys are going to have to stop prove to me that you can stop us from being able to have success running the football and then we'll figure out from a pass catching standpoint how how to you know push the ball down the field if that's what we want to do or you know thinking and dunking with Cade I know on third downs and and making sure he's you know eating like he was against the Baltimore Ravens yeah, so we'll see what Kate Otten is up to uh, later today on uh, today's episode talking about National Tight Ends Day and sort of how that could impact things. But we'll, we'll we'll test those powers, Jarvis, a little bit to see if, you know, any players that you want to mention as we continue today's Locked on Falcons and talk about other elements that may be keys to victory and whether or not those guys will step up and we'll get into all of that, guys, as we continue today's Locked on Falcons. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 10 million active members because it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Because unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. Pick more or less on up to six player stat projections, and you can watch the winnings roll in. And if you're looking to get in on the action because certain sports books aren't available in your state, Prize picks is withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. You can get your money in as little as 15 minutes. So whether you want to go check it out for this week eight matchup between the Falcons and Bucks, you want to go more or less, Baker Mayfield, Bijan Robinson, whatever. Or now that basketball season is back, you know, I know Hawks fans have a complicated relationship with Luka Doncic, but man, it's just like, hey, whatever Luka's projection is, I'm going more on the point totals every single time and watch those winnings roll in. So check it out by downloading Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On NFL and you'll get fifty dollars instantly when you play your first five dollar lineup. And that's code Locked On NFL to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. 
prize picks, run your game. And pre-alcohol probiotic drink by Z-Biotics is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct and not dehydration that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow. So I gave pre-alcohol a try for the first time when I was hanging out with some college buddies. And you wouldn't believe how on top of my game I was the next day. They even commented on it. You know, definitely drinking a lot more responsibly today than I was back then when we used to hang out. But if you want to keep enjoying your tomorrows, make sure you go to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use locked on NFL at checkout. Zbiotics is back with a hundred percent money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL at checkout for 15% off. So here with Jarvis Davis of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And normally we do these Friday shows and we talk about sort of what's the biggest key to victory. And, and Jarvis and I, being two like-minded individuals, tend to focus on the trenches. We've talked a little bit about the Falcons' ability to win up front to help slow down this Bucks uh, run offense. Um, and so, Jarvis, I give you the floor to talk about any other areas of this team that you want to see step up and whether you believe that if they do, that will help this team win. You know, what what other topics are are you into uh, in terms of looking at this week eight matchup between the Falcons and Bucks? I, I think first thing that comes to mind is Kirk Cousins because I feel like this is, he's a, a, the key instrument in this in this offense because that was the reason why he was brought in. You had the back to back, you know, thirty plus uh, points being scored, and then Seattle. Then you just come out and just laid an egg on offense, right? The only thing, the only shining light that you had that that was on the offensive side of the football was Bajon Robinson. He was out there making a freaking and one mixtape out there <laughs> against the Seahawks. It was just he was it was just amazing to watch that. And and I think that, you know, that's the, really the only positive that I, I was able to draw from from that from from that game. And I think that I want to see that paired with uh, a locked in uh, on time, uh, uh, the clock running correctly in his head from a quarterback standpoint. I want to see that those that combination of those two things. And I want to see what that looks like. Can that be a 30 point 30 point game? Because I feel like that's the number in, in this matchup. If the, I feel like if the Falcons are able to get 30 plus points in this particular game, it could be right at 30. And I feel that they, they'll be able to get a win because when you're constantly being challenged from a defense standpoint, you know, everybody talking about the pass rush, everybody talking about they've been running the football all over y'all. I think at some point, the defense, the defensive line, linebacker core, say uh, back end of the defense, all those guys going to say, you know what, man, enough of this. And I feel like they're going to step up in this game because everybody understands. I know Raheem Morris has been letting everyone know the South is on the line. The South is on the line in this game. And I think you're going to be able to put yourself in position to be front runners for this division. And that was the goal coming to this season because, hey, we can, the Falcons said that they can get through the get to the playoffs through the winning the NFC South. This particular game right there is what, how you're going to back that up. You can back that up, and I feel like the defense will be up to up to up to you know up to you know being being a space where they can do it. And, and I feel like you know, but it all starts with Kirk Cousins. It all starts with Kirk. They don't score thirty plus points if Kirk is not on point in this game. And and the, and the great thing about having that expectation come to this game, Aaron, and we haven't been able to have that from a quarterback standpoint in the past couple of years, is we've seen them do it. Like really well against this team just a few a couple weeks ago. So I feel like this is the game where Raheem Morris gets the guys together and say, "Hey, you know what? Defense, y'all know what y'all have to do. Like, just stop the run, get these guys up off the ground, make them one dimensional, and we can put some pressure on on a guy like Baker Mayfield. We know what happens when he's under pressure and gets to thinking and hesitating. 
we know where he is. There's a reason why he's been on several teams since he's been in the NFL. And, and I feel like Kurt putting that 30 piece on, on the board will do this, this team well, and they'll come out with a win. Yeah, I think I think you make some great points, Jarvis. You know, we talk about stopping the run and and hoping the pass rush gets better. You know, one of the ways that the, the offense can help the defense get in those situations is get that early lead and, and force sure. Tampa Bay to abandon the run and get them into a one dimensional offense where they're dropping back and throwing the football a bunch. And you have Baker Mayfield not, you know, having quite the same security blankets that he has in Chris Godwin and and uh, Mike Evans and you know, that will allow this pass rush to kind of pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. So I think if the Falcons offense can sort of step up, and, and I think you're right with Kirk Cousins, we, as you said, we, we saw Bajan Robinson putting together an and one mixtape, but, you know, running the football is, is certainly valuable to the offense, but it's not really conducive to scoring a lot of points. It's it's right. going to keep your offense on schedule. It's going to put you in, in manageable third down so that you can string together long drives, but in order for you to score points, you, you need those chunk yardage. And, and Bajan does everything possible to get those chunk yardage on some of the runs with all the yes, cuts and stuff that he's doing. Uh, but, it, you know, usually it's a little easier if you want to get those 20, 30 yard gains. It's usually easier to get that through the air. And we saw the Falcons do that in that first matchup against the Bucks, who seemingly left the middle of the field wide open. Shout out to uh, Todd Bowles, true believer in the classic cover three uh, defense and having those guys not really guard the seams and, and covering the flats. And it's like, okay, well, all right, we'll just throw 30 yard bombs to Kyle Pitts and Drake London all day. And I, I think they're going to continue to do that. But the key difference is they have Antoine Winfield now roaming the middle of the field. Yes. And Jarvis says, you and I have talked about on the uh, Atlanta football party. Uh, and, um, you know, it, I talked about this yesterday with James Jarko of crossover on crossover Thursday of lockdown bucks. You know, he's going to get hits. Like, you know, I, I feel like Jesse Bates and Antoine Winfield are probably the two best safeties in, in the league in terms of just being playmakers. Yeah. Do you feel like that's a fair statement? Yeah, I feel like it's a fair statement because because here's the thing. Just think about what the, the Falcons were able to do. They they literally carved this defense up. They made them look like they weren't even there at times. And, you know, just from a, a – as far as being in the pass game, obviously they were able to shut down the run game, and the Falcons had to throw the ball, what, 58 times uh, to, to to get a win. They need every single pass, right? So – but you, when we talk about the tradition of tie bowl defense, you didn't see that much pressure because guess what? He didn't want to put guys like K.J. Britt and, you know, even Jordan Whitehead. He was uh, out there struggling a little bit and ended up getting hurt too. So – they were down a lot in, in, in on the back end of that defense. So he he had to make a, a necessary adjustment. I feel like this is the biggest adjustment that he can make this game. So I don't expect 509 passing yards. That's what I I don't I don't expect that, especially when you got a guy like Antoine Whitfield. And what you're talking about with those cover three, you know, getting up the seam. That's why I feel like Kyle, Kyle Pitts, I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later on as far as being that natural tight end day. But that's why I feel like he was so vital in that offense and, and was able to get an explosive play as well because of Antoine Winfield's absence. So I feel like with him being back in the fold, and I, I love I love Kalaja Kansi, um, you know, coming out, you know, as well. I know that's from you know, are y'all defensive tackle? You are y'all mm -hmm. claiming that? What, what school Kalaja Kansi go to? I'm, I'm just curious. Pitt. Oh, okay. Is that, okay. Is that is that like your? Oh, 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 okay. oh, oh. So is that DTU? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, Hall of Fame. You know, greatest <laughs> human being on the planet, Aaron Donald. You That's know, tackle I've ever seen with my own eyes. I mean, he counts for like eight different D tackles, so we oh, might have yeah, produced yeah. all of them. So defensive yeah. end too. You know, they ran the odd front. You know, from time to time. But 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 anyway. But yeah. So I, I think that with those two guys coming back, you know, Kalaja Cancer just adds to the fold. You know, as far as with the defense tackle, we know Big Vita Vea. Or what the, the the issues that they have with him? I think Bajan got introduced to him, very <laughs> very much so. So we this is going to be a task for this offensive line, and, and thankfully Bergeron is looks like he's going to be back in the fold. So I, I feel like that is going to be something that's going to you know benefit the Falcons being back. But they cannot expect to happen what happened last time to happen this game, and that's solely because. Antoine Whitfield will be on there. And, and I think that, you know, if Kirk is able to lock in, like we talked about earlier, 
man, it would be something if they're able to, you know, have a, a lot of production and put up that 30 point, uh, get to that 30 point threshold. Yeah, definitely. So we'll see Antoine Winfield's impact on this game, especially when it comes to a player like Falcons tight end Kyle Pitts. And we'll see how big a day Kyle Pitts can have because this Sunday happens to be National Tight Ends Day uh, and whatnot. And, you know, I think the tight end position is going to be critical, not only for Kyle Pitts, but also with the Bucks down their two top receivers. And we'll break that down, guys, as we wrap up today's Locked On Falcons. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So whether it's because you get that hunch in the middle of the game and you feel like, oh, well, things might change in the second half of this game, you can go to the same place where you check out the latest stats or view the live play-by-play. It's all on the same page where you place your bets. Uh, and you can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. And if you want to place that bet on the upcoming Falcons Bucks Week 8 matchup where the Falcons are favored by two and a half points, go ahead. You have my permission. Or you want to bet on the upcoming Hawks action or other NBA action, NFL action, baseball, hockey, whatever floats your boat. It's all available at FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Just head over to FanDuel.com. Again, that's FanDuel.com. So this Sunday is National Tight Ends Day. And last year, National Tight Ends Day also sort of coincidentally came when the Falcons traveled to Tampa Bay in week seven in order to beat the Bucs on the road on that day. Will history repeat itself? Obviously, we'll find out. This Sunday, and of course, check out myself and Tanisha Batiste on the Locked On Falcons, Locked On Sports Atlanta postcast, of course, available on YouTube on Locked On Sports Atlanta, and of course, on the Locked On Falcons audio feed, wherever you get your podcast. But Jarvis, I know you've already expressed your concerns this week elsewhere about, you know, Kate Otten's potential to impact this game, especially with the Bucks being down, Chris Evans, um, Chris Evans. (laughs) <laughs> Mike <laughs> Evans and Chris Godwin, um, yeah. you know, Captain America. Um, but, you know, those guys being out of lineup discussed it earlier where like the, the offense is going to run through probably the running backs and tight ends a lot more than it has. Um, and we've seen Kate Otten, not last year in that national tight end game matchup, but later in the season when the Falcons had a, a rematch, make the critical play at the end of the game to win the Bucks that particular game. So, um, you know, what are your concerns about Kate Otten? And, is, is, and again, this is an opportunity for you to express, you know, your your love and admiration for a, a certain Falcons uh, third year linebacker in, in terms of, you know, how he could help impact this game. But I, I you know, I'm not going to force your hand on that one, Jarvis. We already got an audio clip of you on the Atlanta football party saying Kate uh, Troy Anderson is the savior of the Falcon season, and we, we will completely clip that out of context and plaster that all over the internet. But I'm you know, yes. how much concern do you have about the Bucks tight end in this matchup? Oh, I have a big concern. I, I feel like he can be a guy that can that can kill you. And he, because like I know the tight end group as a whole in the NFL hasn't been performing like what we used to. Like we had guys like Travis Kelsey at his peak, George Kittle at his peak before all. He's dealing with a and he's a walking injury report as of in the last few years. So when when you think about the the splurge of the tight end growth in this league, when you know Jeremy Shockey and even you know even the, the redhead dude uh, who used to play for the Saints, I can't even think of his name right now. Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Graham. So I think we've seen the evolution of the, of the tight end position in the NFL and and how they can really take you out, man. Especially when you have teams who like to run that cover three. Or teams who like to run run the cover two, and you can get those guys who can get up the seams and get matched up, you know, and, and on, the, on on those middle linebackers trying to get up, you know, to make those big plays. So I feel like uh, Kyle, I mean, Kate Auden is a guy who can do that. He can hurt you. And with Troy Anderson potentially coming back, reason why I was kind of half joking, I was kind of serious, you know, about, about it. And I feel like we understand Nate Landman, Landman's. Uh, limitations and, and, and pass coverage i've never said that that dude is that's his strength right his strength is you know run game down here all oh, that's the old school linebacker but troy anderson's strength is supposed to be hey coverage i can run with anybody in the league i'm an athletic i can i can do that and i think that that gives you more options 
when you have those run blitzes and on early downs. So if you have to guard K Otten on one on one, if you're doing a run blitz and they just so happen to pass the ball, you'll feel okay. You'll be able to sleep at night from from Jimmy Lake's standpoint. So I, I feel like Troy coming back could be the not so, not necessarily the savior because obviously you know perfect you know involved in that you know but for me I, I feel like this is something that it gives you more options as a defense when you have a guy like Troy in there because you feel comfortable with him guarding a tight end one on one because Iden is not the blazing speed guy but he's just he's a guy that you know Baker Mayfield trusts and he can and get him the football so I feel like if you can have that matchup. In, in this game, I feel I don't feel like it'll be a big a, a big old celebration on National Tight Ends Day from the Bucks perspective. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right about that. You know, you you mentioned on the Atlanta Football Party, go check it out again on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Uh, you know, the Falcons don't have the most illustrious history when it comes to covering tight ends, and you know, last year they were kind of forced because of the Troy Anderson injury to just basically, oh, well, Richie Grant, you're our best option, so go out there and do your best and. We saw far too often last year his best wasn't necessarily good enough. And so I think you're right with having a healthy Troy Anderson. It gives you another option. It, it gives you, you know, in addition to sort of Kevin King kind of serving that role a little bit this year when the Falcons go out there and deploy their tight end and say, OK, Kevin King, you're you know six, three, whatever you are, go match up against the tight end and whatnot. Um, but you, you saw Noah Fant kind of take advantage of that last week. So that is, again, I think a point where it's like when you have one option and that option isn't good enough, like you want to have that secondary option. But flipping the script to Kyle Pitts, who basically after a quiet first four games of the season sort of had his breakout game in that Bucks matchup. We've already mentioned sort of, you know, how will Antoine Winfield influence this? But do you feel like Kyle Pitts these last couple of weeks, he's been one of the more productive tight ends in the NFL. You saw some of the explosive plays. In previous weeks, last week, a lot of it was kind of check downs, trying to get the ball underneath and him catching a lot of that. Do you feel like this trend can continue and Kyle Pitts can still continue to be a core part of this offense after that sort of first month where, you know, they were still trying to figure it out? Uh, absolutely. Because here, here's the thing, man. Like I talked about how the defensive line had put out bad tape when it comes to defending the run game as far as the Falcons defense. Uh, this Falcons offense has also put out really good tape that they have a wide receiver one and number five. And specifically, going back to that Tampa game, to the tune of 12, 12 catches for 154 yards and a touchdown. So I feel like Todd Bowles is going to do everything in his power so that doesn't happen again. So when you talk about attention being drawn to other spaces, Kyle has to be able to take advantage of that. And I wouldn't be surprised if you find Winfield one-on-one. -on -one. And to be honest with you, given where this man was drafted, he needs to be able to win at least one or two of those matchups. If it's, say, for instance, they get matched up six, seven times, I need you to at least get two, bro. <laughs> that's all. And more than likely, that's going to be a big play because there is there has to be a attention drawn to what Drake London is, is doing because of what he gave them la last time they played. So I feel like this is a game. This actually is a perfect opportunity. Regardless of whether or not, you know, I mean, with Winfield coming back, obviously it's, it's big for the Bucks. but I feel like being able to deploy Drake, what Drake has been, Drake has done, the film they've watched on that and say, hey, man, this can't happen again. This, this is the adjustments we're going to make towards that. Now that they've made those necessary adjustments and they have Winfield back in the fold, I feel like Pitts is going to be matched up on him. And, I, and like I said, I need him to at least get a couple of, couple of wins in, in that matchup. Because yeah. you just look at him. Just look at him. Like, he should be able to win it a couple times. Yeah, I agree. I agree uh, 100% with that. So we'll see how the Falcons, if they can take advantage of their matchups. I think they have some favorable ones. Uh, you know, to me, it's basically like Zion McCollum, I think, has played really well for the Bucs at one of the outside cornerback spots. But you saw Darnell Mooney kind of terrorize Jamel Dean in the last matchup. Jamel sure. Dean's not playing this week in his backup Tyreek Funderburk is, is not nearly as good as Jamel Dean. So Darnell Mooney should eat. You know, Drake London should eat. You know, basically just throw away from Zion McCullen, Antoine Winfield, and Levante David and just go after Funderburk and KJ Britt and whoever else is out there. And if you just do that all day, I feel like Kirk in this offense should work. But we'll see what the Falcons do this Sunday on National Titans Day. Any lasting thoughts, Jarvis? 
I was just gonna say, man, this came to mind when I was I was listening to uh Zach Robinson when he was speaking uh at a press press conference earlier on this week. I, I think that these these tests keep coming up for him as an offense coordinator, right? Like you you got a, a game where guys just came out flat for whatever reason in Seattle, and you're trying to figure out how you can how you can avoid that by getting off to a fast start offensively. Like you can't have a three and out. That just can't happen. Those things can't happen. So, and you couple that with having a lot of success against this team last time. And we talked about how you know they're gonna try to take away Drake London because of you know 12 for 154 and a two. That is you're not gonna win the game if you let that anything close to that happen. So I feel like the adjustments for the adjustments it's gonna be a it's gonna be a nice test for for Zach Robinson as an OC to see what he comes up with, what he tries to do. Does he try to get Bajan Robinson out in open space and passing him the ball, or he try to get Tyler Algiers a couple of touches in that in that first drive versus letting him come in in the second quarter and kind of spell Bajan and then figuring out if he's hot or not. Like, is it in the game plan to get both of these guys going? So I feel. This is going to be an interesting one to watch, and I'm, I'm, and he can talk about how he doesn't necessarily how to do the, like like to do the whole scripted plays thing. He kind of like be more of a feel, and I love that because I'm a feel type of guy in life. So <laughs> I, I feel like he's, you know, this is going to be something interesting to keep an eye on, as from an OC standpoint, the adjustment to the adjustment, and what do you do when you have success against the team and they're they're adjusting. And then what do you do coming off of uh, just uh, uh, you just laying the egg on offense? So, so a combination of, of those two things together, I, I'm really interested to see what he comes up with. I think that's a great way to end the, today's episode. We'll see what Zach Robinson has cooking up uh, against this Bucks defense on Sunday. Of course, myself, Denitra Batiste, will be back after the game for a Locked On Sports Atlanta postcast. Check it out on the Locked On Sports Atlanta YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Also, a lot of great football content on Locked On Sports Atlanta with Jarvis as well. Myself, Tanitra, Maria Martin, so many other people. Not just Falcon stuff, Hawk stuff. Basketball's back. Right, you know, uh, as well as college football as well. So check that out on Locked On Sports Atlanta uh, on the uh, YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, my brain is 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 running a million miles a minute, but um, check it out, Locked On Sports Atlanta. Uh, check out Locked On NFL to get you guys geared up for the other action this weekend elsewhere in the NFL. It is all part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every 